Hello everyone! For today's lecture video, we'll be talking about Psychometry Part 3. So we are now on the third installment. We'll be talking about the following lesson objectives. First is that we need to differentiate chemical equation and chemical reaction. Second is we need to balance chemical equation correctly. And third is to convert psychometrical quantities within a chemical equation. Mole unit to mole unit, mole unit to mass, and then mass to mass. Particularly, objective number three will be um, discussed on the next um, portion or the next lecture video. But in this case, we'll be talking about lesson one and two. Not lesson one, but rather learning objective one and two. Okay? So what about the um, outline? We'll be talking about chemical equation and then mass relationships again on the next lecture video. So meaning to say, we'll be talking about chemical equations first. Okay, so again, I'll be uh, saying my apologies if you will be hearing ambient noises during and along the way of the lecture video. But nonetheless, let me continue. Now, what are chemical reaction and chemical equation? Now, the, there is just a key difference between them. A chemical reaction is simply the process in which a one or more substances is changed into one or more new substances. And then a chemical equation is simply the symbolic representation of a chemical reaction. It uses symbols and chemical formulas to illustrate what happens in a chemical reaction. So madaling salita po, ang word na chemical reaction, ito mismo yung proseso kung saan isa o higit pang substances ay nag undergo ng change para makagawa ng isa o higit pang bagong substance. In other words, chemical reaction mismo yung proseso. Okay? Chemical reaction is the process itself. Whereas, chemical equation, simbolo o representasyon ng reaction. Okay? So, chemical reaction is the process itself. It's the thing that we see. It's the happening or the chemical process itself. Whereas, an equation, this is the written code, the symbol, the representation of what we see with our eyes. So, in other words, just a symbolic representation on how we can illustrate in writing the chemical reaction. Okay? So, hopefully, the difference is clear. Now, let's focus on the chemical equation. Now, for a chemical equation, an example is here. You have here uh, hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas yields to H2O. Now, the colored green, these are what we call reactants. These are the starting materials in a chemical reaction. Whereas the blue ones here at the right side, this is what you call, or these are what you call, products. Products are the substances that formed as a result of the chemical, chemical reaction. A chemical reaction can have one or more products. So, hindi po ibig sabihin na isang example dito ay isa na ang product for all chemical reaction. There will be times na isa o higit pa ang magiging produkto. Okay? So, please remember as well, most of the time, nasa kaliwa ang mga reactant, nasa kanan ang product. Left reactant, right is your product. Nahati sila with this particular arrow. That indicates or is read as produces. Like this one. Your arrow, the symbol means produces, yields, or forms. And then the addition sign simply means reacts with, is added to, or combines with. So we do not read this as hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas. No, we read this like hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas yields to water. Now, in some cases, you may already saw some chemical reaction having subscript. Now, when the chemical reaction, say for example, has a subscript like this one, X and then subscript AQ. So elemental X or elemental substance and then it has a subscript AQ. AQ means aqueous solution. That means X or compound X was dissolved in water. And then, how about this one? Say, for example, it has a subscript S. S means the state is solid. And then, L means it's liquid. And then, a subscript G means it is in the state of matter. And rather, in the state of gas. What about this um, symbol for heat? Now, that means the chemical reaction involves heat with that particular process. Okay? So, hopefully, this is clear. Now, how do we read chemical equations? So, this is the proper way on how we read chemical equations. So, we have here another example. So, the bullet points show you how we read them, some of the examples on how we may read them. So, gone are the days that we read this as CH4 plus 2O2, 
and equal to CO2 plus 2H2. That is just a, you know, mabilis na paraan para lang mabasa natin. No? That's, that's still okay, but the formal way is this one. Automatically, if there is no numerical coefficient before CH4, that is automatically one mole. So we can read, read this as one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen gas to produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Or we can read this like the second point, one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen gas to form one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. So that is the proper way on how we read chemical equation. Your plus sign means reacts with or added to when the plus sign is here on the left side. And then we read the plus sign here at the right side as end. Just like this one. One mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. And this arrow is not equal sign or this is not read as equal. That is read as to produce or to form. Just like this one. You have examples here. Produces, yields, or forms. Okay? So hopefully that particular bit is clear and concise. Now at this point, we are now going to talk about one of the staple concepts or topics in chemistry, which is balancing chemical equations. I know from your primary school or former school years, you've encountered this particular bit. But nonetheless, let us have a review on how to do this. Now, what are the reasons why we balance chemical equation? We balance chemical equation because, okay, chemical equations must be balanced in order for us to follow one rule or one fundamental law of matter, that is your law of conservation of mass. Again, as a review, when we say law of conservation of mass, that means um, during a chemical process, the atoms of the elements only rearranged, okay? Therefore, Okay, we conserve the mass of those particular substances that seemingly okay, um, changed, but actually their atoms only rearranged. Okay? Okay. Now at this point, we'll be talking about the procedure on how we can balance chemical equations. Let's start with number one. The first step is we need to count the atoms of each element in the reactants in the product. So that means counting of the subscript for each or respective element. Second is to begin balancing the equation by adjusting the coefficients to make the number of atoms of each element the same on both sides. So meaning to say, we need to adjust the left side with that of the right side accordingly or respectively. Third is check if the equation is already balanced. We do this by accounting once again the subscripts for the elements from the left side and the right side. Make sure that you have the same total number of each type of atoms on both sides of the equation. So let me give you an example on how we may do this. So an example is we have here this particular chemical equation. Okay, so again, we have your left side and the right side of the chemical equation. The left side is the reactant side. The right side of the arrow is your product side. So the first step is to account first the number of respective atoms for each element. So originally, on the left side or the reactant side, we have two atoms for nitrogen and then two atoms for hydrogen. And then on the right side, we have one for nitrogen and three for oxygen. So looking at it, it looks like the elements from the left and the right side have really a different number of atoms. So magkaiba talaga. Okay? To make things easier, mas maganda po gawin natin na parang seemingly technique ay i-adjust yung pinakamababa dun sa kaparehan niya. So, tignan natin, nitrogen at nitrogen. Alin ang mas mababa? Ang mas mababa ay itong nasa kanan. Isa lang ang nitrogen atom sa kabila or sa left side dalawang nitrogen atom. So, as a technique, unahin natin i-adjust yung pinakamababa. Itong one, gawin natin dalawa. Papaano? Papaano maging dalawa itong isa? Maglagay ng isang or maglagay ng number 2 subs maglagay ng number 2 numerical coefficient. Okay, not subscript but numerical coefficient before the compound. Since naglagay ng 2 diyan, what will happen here is ma-adjust itong nitrogen at hydrogen. So 2 
times na subscript, automatically, pag walang number na subscript, that will be 1. 2 times 1 for nitrogen, we have 2. 2 times 3, subscript for hydrogen, we have 6. Now, at this point, okay na yung nitrogen on both sides. Ang hindi na lang okay ay itong hydrogen. So, again, tignan, alin ang mas mababa? Mas mababa itong nasa kaliwa, itong dalawa. So, kailangan siya maging 6. So, para maging 6 ito, maglalagay ka ng 3 dito sa hydrogen. So, 3 times 2, okay, may iba na ito, this will be 6. Now, at this point, your hydrogens for the left and right side are okay. Now, this will be your final answer. Okay, sorry about that. This will be your final balanced chemical equation. It's that easy. Okay? How about another example? So, this looks kind of creepy or kind of enamoring, but nonetheless, let me give an example on how to do this. So, we have here iron 3 bromide, plus you have here a, this is actually um, sulfuric acid, and then we have iron 3 sulfate here, okay, and then added with hydrobromic acid. HBr. Again, so account each number of atoms for each element from the left and right side reactant and product side. So we have here iron, bromine, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and then the same thing on the right side. So let me just write them with another colored pen. So, so let me just account them each. So iron on the left side or reactant side, we only have one. Bromine, we have 3. We're counting off the atoms. Hydrogen, we have 2. Sulfur, we have 1. And then oxygen, we have 4. On the right side, iron has 2. Sulfur, okay. Now, since sulfur is within a parenthesis, we distribute 3 times 1. Automatic, that's 1. So, sulfur is 3. For oxygen, 3 times 4, that will be 12. Bromine is here, 1. Hydrogen is 1. Okay? To make things easier, just like what we did in item number one, let's start with um let's start with iron. Now iron here, look between the left side and the right side, which has the lower number of atoms. So it looks like the left side has a lower number. One versus two, so one is lower. I need to create or make one atom for iron into two. So I will put two here. So two times one, subscript for iron so originally okay originally this one will will now become two and also your bromine since you have here bromine as part of febr3 it will be affected so two times three the subscript for bromine this will become six two times three six now your iron is okay however your bromine is not affected so, between the reactant and product side bromine, choose the lower number of atom. This one, bromine 1. So, I need to create bromine 1 atom of number into 6. So, I will put 6 here where the bromine is. Therefore, your bromine will be affected. Okay, sorry about that. Your bromine will be affected plus the hydrogen. So, 6 times 1 for bromine and then 6 times 1 for hydrogen as well. Okay, now your bromine is okay. Next, how about your hydrogen? Now again, look for the lower number atom. That is on the left side. So I need to adjust 2 to become 6. So your hydrogen is here. I will put number 3 as a subscript. So that 3 times 2 will become 6 here. So your hydrogen will now become 3 times 2 subscript 6. Your hydrogen on both sides is now okay. However, the sulfur and oxygen here in H2SO4 is also affected, so I'll remove this one and readjust it. So 3 times 1, subscript for sulfur, that will be 3. And then 3 times 4 for oxygen, that will be 12. Now looking at your sulfur and oxygen, they are now okay. I don't need to adjust them. Now at this point, you have your balanced chemical equation. Okay? Okay, now that is how... We balance chemical equation as well as how we read chemical equation plus the difference between a chemical reaction and chemical equation. 
I really hope that you learned a thing or two in this particular topic.